Welcome to the EquiCoach 5 minute stretch sequence for hips and pelvis. We are starting out on all fours with your knees roughly underneath your hips and hands very slightly in front of the shoulders and extending back into a crouch position. Now on the inhalation you're coming forward and lifting your chest and tailbone up, exhaling, tucking the pelvis and extending back into the crouch position. It's very important to match the breath and the movement together. So if you have a breath count of seven, for example, try to make your movement last for the whole seven counts. So inhaling again, coming forward, lifting the chest and tail, taking care to keep the head in line with the rest of the spine. So you're thinking of the crown of the head being the topmost part of the spine and extending the tailbone back on the exhalation as you compress the belly. Inhaling, coming forward, and exhaling, extending back. And very gently mobilizing the spine, getting ready for some slightly stronger positions. Inhaling, coming forward again, lifting the chest and tail. And on the exhalation, tucking those toes and extending back. So coming into what would traditionally be called a downward dog position. If you feel like your weight is dumping forward onto your hands, I want you to quite generously bend your knees and take your belly button back towards the thighs. So really extending through the back, rotating the shoulders out so you create some space through the shoulder blades, transferring the weight onto the right foot in this instance and on an exhalation bringing that left leg forward into a lunge. Again, make sure the crown of the head is the topmost part of your spine. So really keeping the head in line with the rest of the spine and maintaining some connection and fluidity with the breath. So a free and easy inhalation and a long extended exhalation. On a subsequent exhalation, you're going to drop that back knee down and release the toes. And with the inhalation, sweep the arms up and overhead. So you're opening up now through the whole front of the body and at the same time starting to initiate a stretch through the front of the hip and the hip flexors. Inhaling, extending up. So think of reaching all the muscles right from the base of the spine up and out through the fingertips with that inhalation and then allowing the arms to float back down with the exhalation. Inhaling up. Exhaling here, you can take the hands to rest on top of that knee. And again, maintaining the connection with the breath. So there's some contraction and release with the breath. The inhalation, I might deepen the stretch slightly and with the exhalation, I may slightly release. Inhaling when you're ready to, floating the arms up. Again, just opening up through the front of the body and then exhaling, taking the hands to rest either side of that front foot, tucking the toes under and extending back into downward dog, which we're using to transition in between the lunges. Reaching out through the spine as much as possible. Now you're going to transfer the weight onto the left foot, extend that right foot up on an inhale and then exhaling, lunging through. So anytime you're compressing the belly, as in that instance of drawing the leg towards the front, you want to make sure that's happening on an exhalation. Again, staying connected with the breath. So free and easy inhalation, long extended exhalation. And when you feel like you've stayed here for roughly the same amount of time as you did on the opposite side, dropping that knee down on an exhale and opening up through the front of the body on an inhalation by sweeping the arms up, exhaling, floating them back down. So you can deepen the lunge in this instance on the inhalation as you draw the arms up and overhead. And as you exhale and float the arms back down, you can release slightly. Inhaling up, extending up and out through the fingertips and then exhaling, relaxing the hands to rest on that leg and staying really connected with the breath. Again, roughly the same amount of time as you did on the opposite side. And when you're ready to come out, floating the arms up again on the inhalation, as you'll see me do shortly. And then on the exhalation, taking the hands either side of that front foot, pushing through the palms, back into that lovely stretch so really reaching out through the tail here 
dropping the knees down and a long exhale here taking it back into the crouch coming up to a sitting position now you're going to extend both legs out in front of you and we're coming into what I call the 90-90 stretch so the front leg or the leg that you extend out in front of you you want to form a 90 degree angle between the shin and the thigh so that shin will be quite straight onto you if that makes sense now you're going to dorsiflex the foot so the toes are moving backwards to protect the knee and the same angle you want to achieve with that back leg so the angle between the thigh and the shin is roughly 90 degrees now as you can see I've placed my hand just cupped gently around the ball of the foot and as I inhale I'm thinking of creating length through the spine so right from the tail out through the crown of the head and then as I exhale I'm gently folding forward I want you to think of effort without struggle so there's no strain intended it's all about the function of the posture not the form so don't worry about how you look and I stay here for roughly five or so breaths and then you're swapping sides so bringing the opposite leg out in front creating that 90 degree angle really important to dorsiflex the foot here to protect the knee cupping the foot with the hand that outside hand there is rested outside of the knee just to protect or to add some stability to the posture inhaling you're creating length as you can see here and then exhaling just folding forward equalizing the amount of time that you spend on either side and then coming back up on an inhalation and you are done a short sequence for you for the hips and pelvis enjoy your riding guys have a great day